Second. Okay, do we have any more? Okay. All those in favor? I'll make a motion to remove the remaining consent, or to approve the remaining consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Mr. Weirich? No, we still have 3A1. Okay. 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 I will make a motion to approve 3A1. Second. Okay. I'll be recusing. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, thank you. Mr. Eric? Middle school guidance, long term substitute, Paul Amaral. Middle school science, grades 7 and 8, Marianne Dishart. Dicert, if I pronounced it correctly. Girls basketball coach, middle school, Rachel Mata. Boys basketball coach, middle school, Andy Gaychuk. And uh, correspondence? Correspondence, you just have my response to a request from the ACLU uh, regarding uh, their asking districts across the state for their graduation waiver policy uh, regarding the kneecap, which we recently approved and it's been forwarded to them. And the other item is the quarterly uh, finance report. And have you heard anything from back from the ACLU? Okay, thank no. you. Thank you. This is something they've asked every school district. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Yeah. I think we're one of the few that already has one. <coughs> we have it. There was a yeah. you know, request through open records. And That's good. No problem. Mm -hmm. Send it over. Okay, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to move up items 7 D through G. Second. All those in favor? Okay, Mr. Eric, 7D. Your first request is for the high school band trip from Mr. Alves to go to Hershey Park, Pennsylvania. Okay, Mr. Alves. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Alves, director of bands here at Tiverton High School. I remember to introduce myself because uh, Mr. Eric <laughs> made sure to introduce myself. So. Does anyone need a copy of the proposal, by the way? No, no they they have have Everybody got it? Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, just a short trip this year. Uh, they're actually only going to miss a half day of school on the Friday. Um, and basically, we're going on to Hershey Park for uh, a one-day competition on, on the Saturday, uh, the 10th. And uh, there's approximately 40 kids going right now uh, with four chaperones. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. The approximate cost is about $600. Uh, three of the groups that are going are marching band, concert band, and jazz ensemble. Um, and there's a, a, you know, a boil-down itinerary. They don't have really uh, specifics in on mm -hmm. the last page there. Okay. So I'd just like to request Please. permission to go, go ahead with the trip. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions from anyone? No? All those in favor? Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck. Have a great night. That's right. We'll, for we'll look forward to the reports That's of right. the, uh, All right. the things winning that you win. <laughs> well, <laughs> trophies. Let's not get right? ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you set high expectations. <laughs> Thank you. The next one. The next is a request uh, from Mrs. Mitchell, uh, seeking permission to run an after-school uh, intramural basketball program at the middle school for both boys and girls. Yes. <laughs> I do have um, just a, it's, it's something of a minor point. We are running the um, intramural program, right? But it is generously funded by Tiverton Prevention Coalition. And I think some of the wording, um, we need to draw that distinction because on the um, permission slip, it says, I, I allow my son or daughter to participate in the intramural program offered by the Tiverton Prevention Coalition. And it, it, it could, you know, it could be confusing. It, well, we're offering it, they're funding it. But we're running the programs. You just said um, we're running it. Yeah. So it's, it's our program funded, generously funded by the Tiverton Prevention Coalition. And so I think because we do have groups such as TASA, the Tiverton After School Arts Program, where they run the programs. Um, but, but we're actually running it. So it's on that permission slip. 
and then the acknowledgement, authorization, and assumption of risk form. Again, it says it's sponsored by Tiverton Pre Prevention <coughs> uh, Coalition After School Program at Tiverton Middle School. Uh, I would prefer that to say it's sponsored by, you know, the Tiverton, yeah, Tiverton School District um, funding provided by. You don't really need to have anything. Just to say TMS. Okay. Right. Just to say TMS in a mural. Nice we're working on a partnership with them. Um, perhaps they're serving as a fiscal agent for us. We're not sure. Uh, so, but if they're running the program, then they're picking the coaches. They're taking the forms. They're doing all of that. The quarry not checks. Doing that, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's our That's program. We'll flush that out. Okay. Yeah, just so that it's clear yeah, to parents so that knows. it's the district that's actually running it, but uh, we're grateful for the funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have a problem with, yeah. you know, generously funded. Yes, it. that's wonderful. Yeah. It'll be a wonderful program, too, to give a lot of kids an opportunity after school. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Um, you said uh, run by teachers. Yeah. Are, are those going to come back to us? For approval well, you're just point? approving the program just right now. Just approving the program right now. Yes, to answer your question, you will have and um, it says a list of volunteers. The management of the program and well as future fundraising is going to be handled by the sports boosters. Did they vote on that? Has that been agreed that they're, that's what they're going to do? I just want to, I don't want to get into a situation where, you know, there's so much fundraising going on and there's a lot of volunteers who are stepping forward. Um, but I just, I want the understanding to be that we approved it on the condition that it would be fundraised. Um, I don't want there to be any confusion that, well, wait a minute, you approved it, why aren't you funding it? No, that, that this, the yeah, is? we're not funding any of this. Okay. No, that's, I'll make sure when I, when so Mrs. Mitchell sends it out, I'll mm -hmm. make it clear. Absolutely. They're not, um, no, this is unfunded. This is just volunteers. Mr. Richmond, uh, Ms. Phillips, and Ms. LeBette, <coughs> Thank you. Could we, um, too, um, with the approval of Bill and Lane, could we just put, make sure that goes in the minutes? Mm -hmm. That the approval was contingent upon Certainly. fundraising from the TMS. Uh, Do you want that part of the motion? or just? Uh, I, could. I could. Well, yeah. go in either way. Either way. Yeah, I just want to reflect it in the minutes. I just want to be clear. Okay. Any other questions? I'll have the list of volunteers for the next meeting. For the next meeting. If okay. Mrs. Well, Mitchell's ready. Okay, all those in favor? Well, we didn't make a motion. Okay, yeah. make a motion. Well, Yanni? Well, we need a motion to approve. A motion to approve it? I don't think there was one. So you're forcing me to make a motion? No. I make a motion to approve it. <laughs> yes. Second. You don't have to. You can make can a motion make not to approve it. We're making you participate. I know. It's all right. It's exercise. Try to wake me up. <laughs> Okay, there's a motion and a second. It's a lock of trust. All those second. in favor? Okay, thank you. Thank you also, while well, Mrs. Mitchell speaking, you have a request uh, for approval for a middle school color guard program at the middle school. program has been active. marching band program has been in place but not the indoor color guard so you're oh. at you want to add an indoor color guard um, yeah. it would be both parade band color guards so the parade band color guard would supplement the indoor or i'm sorry the parade band color guard would supplement the marching band and then the indoor color guard is something separate so are you asking for approval of both of them or just the parade um both that was under the Modify. I well, just thought it was just one, but I thought it was for the parade. Yeah, that's why I was yeah. asking because I know we, the parade band has been in place, but the indoor color guard is not. Um, that's why it was. That's new, or that would be new. 
I had some questions on, on the funding um, for that. It, it says in our packet that um, the your past practice at the middle school has been to use the monies earned from parade performances to fund the uh, color guard. Yes, these decisions predate me. Yeah. And so, and certainly, so, I'm looking into changing a lot of those practices fiscally. So, you're no longer happen. planning to do that? Um, no. We are definitely looking into changing that. Because I, I know at the at the high school, Mr. Alves uses the um, monies that they earn from parade performances to support the marching band, instruments, repairs, music. And I was wondering if the middle school is using parade money for the color guard, what money is left available to fund your marching band expenses, such as instruments, repairs, and music? So you earn enough from parade band performances to support the parade band, and you've got enough left over to support a color guard. Yeah. Wow. Keep, <laughs> but keep in mind, I, gotta, I want the committee to understand this. We, this item is not in our teacher's contract. In other words, if, so if the boosters care to give a honorarium of some kind, mm -hmm. that's, that's when we don't pay for that. This. this isn't a paid position it's not in the contracts mm -hmm. so I'm asking permission volunteer only yeah, right. that they have this and then we would get the volunteers approved by you right okay. we're not oh, we're not paying for anything no. No, no. so are we approving I'm the idea of having the color guard because mm -hmm. it's never been brought before the committee right. right okay that's that's the only thing I'm asking you to approve is the concept mm -hmm. and then we would bring the somebody forward, somebody forward. whoever we advertise <coughs> and get Okay. But what about the fun in indoor color guard? And Jen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, it's new. You're going to have uniforms. You're going to have props. You're going to have um, show design. You're going to have fees to enter the competition. Are you saying we don't pay for it? Okay, that so that has to come. That's my question. So that's coming from where? I couldn't tell. I would assume it comes from the boosters. Say, Doesn't come they, from us. Who's there? To that? You would have girls. because no one's before us saying we're willing to fundraise all this money do we have have they taken a vote at Temple Junior are those parents here no, I mean, they have taken a vote they agree they've taken a vote at Temple Junior to support indoor color guard yes because that's not my understanding Jen yes that's what we did at the last meeting because my point. understanding at the last meeting from talking to some of the people who were there is that you would actually approach them with the idea that you weren't going to go forward with this because it was expensive. That's why I'm confused. Right. And they wanted, we had, we had three parents who wanted to go ahead and take them, uh, and take them to competitions too. Um, and then we had a few parents um, who were concerned about the funding. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like with the indoor aspect, it would have to be played a little bit by ear because we haven't done this before. So it would have to be a little bit of seeing how much it will cost, doing estimates, seeing if we can facilitate it through fundraising. So we, we were on the fence with it. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely can support the parade band color guard. Yes. Hands down, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, the indoor program is what's in question. Um, so it is a little bit of a trial and error with it as far as can you support it? Are the girls going to be able to fundraise enough to be able to support right. it? Um, I know previously we've had enough money for them to go out and purchase that, you know, our, our actually our volunteer who comes in and instructs some of the dance. She went out and put together some of the, the performing outfits. Um, so. And there's a crossover between the two. Right, there is. That's quite a bit of it. The indoor program is more of an audition group. Well, they do they do a show. Yes. Versus the marching band is they 
they perform a routine to the specific music of the marching band. Right. Indoor color guard is totally different because they have a different music, they have a different routine. So it really is very different. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, you're saying there's crossover, but there really isn't. The only crossover I can see is it's participation. The yeah. <coughs> it's the same kid. Yeah. Right, right. So do we, I guess, so then Bill, should we, same kind of motion that it's continued? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm asking, I'm just simply seeing if the committee wants to approve. But the program, again, the program is strictly on, on volunteer right. able to fund, fund itself. Right. Absolutely. Because there will be no fees charged to the students to participate, no. correct? And they're and not required, no they're not required no. to buy uniforms or their own no. um, equipment or anything else, right? No. Okay. So uh, it's contingent with that understanding that it's outside fundraising that's going to pay okay. for it. Okay. But that you have knowledge right. that's going okay. on. And sure. That's good. So does someone sure. have a motion? Are you waiting for me again? No. no. I'm, <laughs> no I, I'm going to make the motion One that we have approved the uh, proposed activity, which will be volunteer and self-funded through fundraising, not user fees or second. participant fees. Okay. Any more questions? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The uh, last uh, item that uh, we took out of order is a request from one of our seniors, uh, Nate Carvalho, would like to start uh, an after school Portuguese club at the middle school. And Nate's here to answer any questions you may have, uh, explain what his senior project is, maybe, and how it will work. Good evening. Hi, Nate. Uh, so, yeah, the Portuguese club, it's uh, my senior project. Uh, pretty much the purpose of it is um, at the middle school, there's, they have Spanish there. They have advanced Spanish, this, that, the other thing. So when they get here, they can actually take Spanish all the way to Spanish 5. Whereas Portuguese, there's no Portuguese at the middle school at all. So when you get here, as far as you can get is Portuguese 4. Which, but I, I'm not saying let's go start a Portuguese class down there. But what I want to do, because last year, Dennis Soares, my Portuguese teacher, he started the uh, Portuguese club here, which is mostly culture more than the language. Um, so what I was thinking that was for kids who may have an interest in Portuguese and they don't get the opportunity to take anything for Portuguese at the middle school, um, start a club. Um, it would be after school, maybe once a week, once every other week. Um, just to, I would go just talk about culture, bring culture to them, maybe work a little bit on the language. But other than that, it's just something to do, keep them in school for a little while after school. Um, and that way when they, the, the feet will be a little wet. So when they get here, mm -hmm. they at least have more of an idea of what Portuguese and Portuguese class would be like. So. That's good. Don't we have introductory Portuguese still at the middle school? Mm -hmm. When, when did we still, lose when that? When did we lose that? That was some time ago. Three days they asked, I want to say three or four years it was, ago. It was longer than that, I think. Mm -hmm. We used to have it when my kids my, went there. My kid, was, my kid was there, too. That's right. Why. No, uh, so four years ago, we still had it, right? Yeah. And so they had to do a big project, you know, every year they have to do a big project. Well, and you've been on the school committee for yeah. four years. It was I, before I, that. It did not, I mean, it was, it was not dropped for lack yeah. of funding, so no, yeah. it, it never came to us for a vote. No, Mr. Mr. Bullia was the teacher. Right. right. Yeah. So and it was cut that, because it stopped we, after that. Could, we couldn't find a qualified well, teacher. Mr. Bullia passed away, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to assume that that's why we couldn't that, find that so that was to go back and look and see. Because it was always so Because he and Mrs. Bullia split. One would take Portuguese, one would take Spanish. Right. Right. Sixth, seventh, and eighth fifths. grade, you could take introductory Spanish and introductory Portuguese, and then we had the eighth grade academic Spanish. Yeah. The Spanish one. So, so what do students right. do now with exploratory Which Spanish? Has to do with we're just trying <laughs> no, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> do all no, that's fine. All I'll bring up the popcorn. Start to exploratory Spanish in sixth grade, and they do it sixth, seventh. And either academic or a third. We, do we have kids with three years of exploratory no, Spanish? Just two. Good. Yeah, <laughs> the three is a little crazy. They're pretty tight. Some of them are taking algebra and um, taking academic Spanish and other co curriculars by eighth grade. So maybe we will look into yeah. bringing it back, back since we right. know it was gone. Right. <laughs> right. No, I mean, yeah. I unfortunately, yeah. when I was there, I didn't even get to take it. Um, I don't know why it was, never, it was never put on my schedule, but I, I felt bad, and I feel bad for the because there's a lot of Portuguese people oh, in this is, community. That's right, right. It's insane. So that will be yes, Miss Senior Howell will be my mentor. She will help me. She'll oh, be the adult good. figure. 
Okay, so. that's a great idea. Uh, no. Uh, seventh and eighth, I think, was the grade we decided. Yeah, that's yes. nice. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's that's different. Even from even if they're in Spanish, it's yeah. open to right. yeah. everybody. Right. That sounds like a great opportunity for them. Then okay. uh, and no cost or fee. Yeah. That's no. my no. mantra for the evening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no cost or fee whatsoever. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the after school Portuguese club at the middle school. Second. Second. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Good All day. those in favor? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. you Have a good night. Good thank job, Nate. Thank you. Okay. So we're back up to the policies. Five A. The uh, first policy is the first reading. Uh, this policy hasn't been reviewed since 1994. It's gifts, grants, and donations. Um, I have highlighted. The new language uh, in bold uh, and underlined it for you, and I've uh, struck uh, the old existing language so people could see what you know what the changes were proposing in this first draft. And we do need to strike the very last line of a product or business oh, enterprise. Caught up. Got it. Yep. It's that whole last paragraph. Oh, <coughs> yeah. Well, the it's last it's sentence. The last sentence. sentence. Yep. Five A. Five A. Yeah. You got it? Yep. Okay. So what did you change, Carol? Just the I the didn't last cross out the last uh, five words. Yeah, last five words. The Sense. end of the last sentence. Your own gifts and donations? Yes. Yeah. Go to that very it starts of a product or business enterprise. Those words need to be deleted as well. Why do we have to approve this? Because, well, because yeah. if there is some cost which we have to. No, well, but plus it's a change, a change yeah. in it. No, no, but I'm talking about oh. any donation should be right. approved by superintendent of schools and vote of the board. Yeah, because you could get a tractor and then it's right. Ten thousand dollars maintenance right. per That's year. Right. And it said yeah. all recognize all gifts, and we thought, well, let's put a dollar amount, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So it's anything over five hundred, or anything which we would incur additional cost for, like mm -hmm. maintenance, installation, mm -hmm. anything right. like that. Which includes any. So further, it says further the board. Any gift accepted by the board becomes property of the district. Further, the district. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's the f is that the yeah. first reading, yeah, Mr. Barrett? Yes, yeah. it's only the first so reading. We'll bring it back then. Okay, thank you. And the next one. The next. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a question, Jan? I'm just going to. One general concern. What, what if someone donates some, as I said, some old clunker, which is worth four hundred dollars? We have to accept it. We could deny. Well, it's under five hundred dollars. Uh, well, it, we would incur additional costs then, because you know maintenance. Yeah, to use it. I mean, or any item. Yeah. Which the, so. It says that it also the principal in whose building the gift is to be used, utilized should be, should be consulted. consulted. Yeah, we just use common sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Common sense yeah. Yeah. would be nice. And then ultimately, the superintendent has to try <coughs> to use any gift in the best interest of the educational program, and he could say no. Sure. Right. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. Now the volunteer, Mr. Reed. The volunteer, I believe this is our third reading. Um, and at our last meeting, there was a uh, there's a question of how many times a background check would need to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, the policy subcommittee just changed uh, the initial language each year to once every four years. Um, and we delineated the difference. Uh, it's really no difference, but Rhode Island residents must get a Rhode Island BCI criminal background check 
And then we added prospective volunteers that were mass residents are required to receive a Corey check every four years. So, so my, my question is, and I, I think we wanted to add to receive a mass Corey check every four years. What is the difference between a BCI check and a Corey check? I don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah, because a, because I thought. Yeah, I think is that Massachusetts. Is a Massachusetts term. term. There's no Rhode Island Corey no. check. No, it's I, called the Rhode Island. No, it's called the Rhode Island. We have the correct okay. language. Okay. Rhode so Island they're the BCI. same thing. They're just called different things. I I don't know that. I, I don't know if, because yeah. Rhode Island is just Rhode Island. Right. I don't know if the quarry from a Massachusetts, I assume it checks Massachusetts. I don't know if they go beyond that. I've never Should we just seen change that. it to prospective volunteers who are Massachusetts residents are required to receive a criminal background check in Massachusetts and just get out the word quarry? Quarry is the Massachusetts. Is it? It's the yeah. term they yeah, use. Fine. I, I would like to just add a Massachusetts Corey check of every four years just to make oh, that distinction so, it's not the Rhode Island. Well, Rhode so Island that nobody's Rhode confused Rhode Island, that if you live in Massachusetts you have a Massachusetts check and if you live in Rhode Island you have a Rhode Island okay. check yeah. and then in the one two three four fifth paragraph it should say the school department will request a copy of the background, background check. check right take out RI we understand that this is all done just to comply with the state, and it's completely meaningless. No, it's not meaningless. Well, it's it basically it's done to comply with the state law. It yeah, is done. Certainly it's certainly comply done with state, state law. But state this law. means if someone did something bad in Rhode Island and moved across the border, this is not going it's to not, comply. It's not as well written as I'd like to see it, and I don't think it's as well right. Well, written as the chief would like. There are many examples yeah. of that before, right? Yeah. So, but it certainly is more than we do now. That's right. correct. And it to comply with what we, they passed. Okay? Do I have a motion now? And we've changed the effective date yeah. to January 2nd. Yes. So are we going to try to hold a BCI night? I was just waiting for the date. I have the email okay. ready to go out. So you'll bring that. Well, you don't need to. You'll just send it out. And we're, going we're, to we're going to do it, I believe, the night, the senior, when they have this, not the senior, but the, the middle school, school middle school band night, band night correct? Band yeah. one of them. Yeah. That's what I'm going to Just gonna check. double check All before right. I sent the email out. Okay. That will be you know the date? So you're going to coordinate that. I don't remember. Uh, and if not, I'll get it tomorrow. I'll send it out I tomorrow. I think we, it was December 12th. It was the 11th or the 12th. It was December 12th. It was a Thursday night. Yes. Yeah. I'll send that. Uh, the email's ready to go. I'll just send it out tomorrow. No, now that we're okay with this. Okay. I don't want to send it out until the policy is approved. So, is, so can we get a motion to approve as amended? Do I have a motion and a second so I can ask some questions? Amended. A motion to approve as amended. Second. Okay, questions? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify uh, in the paragraph that says in the current or if the current or prospective volunteer has already undergone a background check, should that be in the last 12 months or since the, the duration of between checks has increased to four years, should that be in the last four years? In between. Okay, so I just I wanted want, to clarify. I want everyone, even if so. So basically, yeah. it was if you've had it in the last year, we just you can give us a copy. You don't have to right. do another. So okay. Yeah, I think we want everyone starting off. And then in the same. Yeah. Okay. Any other Think questions? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No. All those in favor? Yay. Spotlight on success. Yeah, Mr. Zaro here from the middle school who would like to talk about. I'm sorry. I thought they voted. I will abstain. You will abstain? Yeah. Okay. It's, not, uh, it's all good, but to me, this is basically. Yanni abstained. Yeah. It's, 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 it's on not. On the background check of the volunteer policy. Okay. Yeah. Jay? Hi, Thank good evening, you. ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Andrew as his co-mentor for a senior project, along with Mrs. Mitchell. Um, just to kind of give you a quick background, we had a storage closet in one of the computer labs, um, and we did a little discovery process, and we had a lot of very old, outdated video equipment that used to be used about maybe 15, 20 years ago before I was there, 
and it appears that one of the reasons it was used was the kids were actually doing video production, newscasts in the morning. So as Andrew's project, we kind of brought him across there to take a look at the inventory of what we actually had, whether we could do anything with the equipment, uh, with his background filming the school, uh, school committee meeting <coughs> now. And it looks like we have the genesis of a project that he can move forward, which would benefit the middle school in years to come. And I think Andrew's just going to kind of give you a brief overview of it. Um, uh, we applied for a, a grant from Bakos Bank, which we got um, to get a, like a tri a TriCaster, which is um, it's a computer that will switch between cameras, and it will also do green screen, where they can actually put um, put you inside like a virtual set, and um, we're going to use it for. Um, to do like a video yearbook for the kids along with that can be put with like the slideshow at the end of the year as well as film like music concerts um, Which could be put like on public access which we really don't do any right now You can also use it for classroom projects because um, Because it's a computer you can hook it up a uh, flash drive up to like a computer and it can send the, the desktop right over to the, the TriCaster so that way it could be like um, you can switch to it so you can see it on the video. So it could be if you use the school community meetings, um, that can put the PowerPoint up right onto the screen so you don't really have to, it's hard to see now, so you can see it easier. And you can actually put um, the person who's talking at the, the, at the bottom of it while the, the slide shows up. Um. I look yeah. forward <laughs> to seeing this stuff on the yeah, screen. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. to give you an example of some of the things going on in the area, um, talking with a couple of the vendors that supply this type of material, they're currently outfitting a studio at uh, Morton Middle School where Massachusetts gave them $150,000 to build a TV studio for the middle school kids. So these are the type of skills that are taking mm -hmm. place around us. This would be a small step going mm -hmm. in that direction. And these are also the types of skills that are being taught at uh, BCC and communication minors that students can then, you know, move on to a four-year degree. Oh, that's so wonderful. So it's just kind of a, the initial yeah. first step down yeah, the road. Yeah, that really is great. And so when will the students and teachers be trained how to use this? Is that part of the senior project? Well, we get our hands on it first. Okay. Um, and so, <laughs> so, as so your project, Andrew, yeah. is to um, do some of this filming of things that take place in the school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. And then... Can, can and then, I mean, you mentioned that students in the school will be taught how to use the mm -hmm. equipment. So is... Uh, do you imagine a new exploratory class or an after-school <laughs> club? Or I mean, we say that because Mr. Zara and I have been thinking about that. Um, a new co-curricular class, obviously starting at the club after school, so there may just be another request for you for um, an instruction <coughs> club. Once you get the suit in and you get some training, um, the sky's the limit. I think the, the minimum is at least a video yearbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with some of the companies they will provide a certain amount of hours of training you know depending on which particular product you buy from mm -hmm. them um, so that's a possibility of getting like a professional development you know staff training in as we move a little bit further down the road 
So you, so you haven't selected the vendor to purchase it from Not yet? yet? No. That's very exciting. So in, in looking at our other policy, can we kill two birds with one stone that we accept the, uh, that we acknowledge the grant and accept the, the gift of the, sure. the TriCaster 40? But you can still Maybe accept the back. gifts without mm -hmm. the policy being revised and approved. Right, but as I said, yes. we might as well do both. two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the grant, acknowledge the hard work. I just, uh, I just Jay. would ask if, and maybe it's probably not Andrew because he has a lot with the senior project, but for Jay and Lori also to include uh, training some volunteer teachers okay. and how to use this if that could, you know, be, be an offshoot of, you know, the stuff that Andrew has to do for the senior project. But Absolutely. Also to get our teachers involved and in how to incorporate it into their lessons would be good. Besides Jay. <laughs> <laughs> will probably be the first to use it. I think, Jay, it, because it's the schools, I think this company from whom you are going to buy it, you can simply <coughs> ask them to provide some more than normal amount right. of training mm -hmm. pro bono, and they will probably jump at it. Yeah. Yeah. They want to promote their products, which later on the kids will learn how to use it, and then they will get real customers right. later on when they move on. This might be too low level, but still probably can get a lot of training and support for the cause. Yeah, and like I said, you know, Andrew's here now. I, I'm, I mean, I like this to having a, you know, a person that's very good at football and trying to build a team around him. He's here now. He's willing to try to do this for us. He's willing to come back, you know, after he leaves Tibbet and, and also help out in an advisory role. Mm -hmm. um, and good. you guys have seen the quality of his work that he's done mm -hmm. for the school committee. That's right. right. And that continuity is so important because otherwise this equipment could end up in that storage closet right. with somebody else <laughs> finding it 15 <laughs> years from now. Right. I don't have your name up. <laughs> <laughs> so should I, I, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion that we uh, accept the generous grant from Bay Coast Bank and the gift of a TriCaster 40 um, from Because <laughs> it's really, well, it's a, a, a well, maybe, that, uh, <coughs> accept a $5,000 grant from Bay Coast, which will be used to purchase a TriCaster 40. So by accepting that, we're accepting the material. Right. Okay, I second that. Any more questions? No? All those in favor? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thanks, much. Jay. Uh, next on Spotlight for Success is Bill Phillips in the High School Bulk Building, an update on that program. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, we had a very busy summer uh, this past summer. We did a six-week uh, boat building program, and I have some pictures and some things I'd like to just pass around. We, uh, the first part of this uh, was in the Rhode Island Monthly Magazine in September. We were part of um, an article that talked about vocational and technical education. Uh, so uh, we, we uh, got our picture in this uh, monthly magazine, which the kids were really excited about. Um, we went on uh, three or four field trips to local marinas, uh, to the International Yacht Restoration School. We had some speakers come in and talk to the kids about uh, career building, in resume writing, we had uh, 13 kids that gave up six weeks of their summer, four days a week, uh, for 20 hours. They were here virtually every day, on time. Um, we, we really had a, a, a good summer. We built two 10 and a half foot uh, rowboats, and uh, there's one picture in there with uh, most all of the kids. Uh, the, two, uh, the two rowboats did float. <laughs> which I was really happy to, to see. Uh, the kids got a couple of certificates, uh, one from the governor's workforce, uh, who was uh, the sponsor, and another from a very good partner of ours, the um, Rhode Island Marine Trade Association. They've been really a, a good partner for us. 
They've gotten the kids some job shadowing uh, experience. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really nice uh, partnership that we have. We're, we're hopefully, uh, with, with Linda's help, uh, uh, she's been in contact with Rhode Island Marine Trades already this year. We're going to do some field trips. We're going to hopefully get involved with the uh, boat show in, uh, in Providence in, in January or February. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So it's, it's an, a nice uh, partnership that we have. The kids, uh, also, uh, the kids, when they were here all week, which they mostly were, they got uh, $85 uh, to take home at the end of the week, each week. So that was a nice incentive uh, for the kids. They, uh, they were always here on Thursdays, which was payday. <laughs> so, uh, and they were always on time. They, they wanted that money. You know, so that was, uh, it was a really nice uh, program. Uh, I think the, the most nerve-wracking part of the, of the six weeks was at graduation in Newport Harbor, uh, about 3.30 uh, in the afternoon. We had a narrow alley to put the boats in. Uh, there were, yeah, they looked to me like million-dollar yachts up and down, and I've got two rowboats out there with kids that are rowing <laughs> in circles, and all I could picture was you know, an oar going through the side of somebody's, you know, 50-foot yacht, so. Thanks for telling us now, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering who was going to cover that insurance-wise. That would be a unique call to the trust. A trust, yes. <laughs> but uh, it was a really, uh, a really good program. We're going to hopefully do it again this summer. Uh, I don't want to steal any more of Linda's stuff, but uh, we're hoping to maybe expand it this summer. Uh, if all things work out, we'll, we'll do it again. And, and uh, it was fun for me. It was, a, it was a great program for the kids. The parents at graduation really spoke up and, and were pleased that the, the, their kids would get out of bed in the morning and, and try to get here on time at 8 o'clock. And uh, Steve saw some of the kids running through the building uh, this past <laughs> summer. But uh, it was a great, a great program. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be involved in it, and hopefully we can continue to do it again. Well, thank you so much for doing that. It's a wonderful, and we'll expand that, hopefully. Okay, thank you. Yes, the next item is, uh, we've talked about it for some time now, is that um, we did have an energy audit uh, done at the high school and the middle school from Energy Source, which is a company that uh, has partnered with National Grid. They came in and did the audit, and as you can see through, if you went through all the work, it was com a very comprehensive review. But <laughs> even um, since we have the facility study due in on November 20th, you know, we put it out for bid. I think we should maybe just hold on to this data right now, not take any action on it until we see what the facilities report says, because I think the facilities report will probably address some of the things here. We'll also verify whether the facilities uh, report that we get, if the numbers will be interesting to see if they match up and if they identify the same things starters. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it is quite an, ex it's a rather it's expensive uh, proposition because it's over a two year window where you would, you would pay up front and then even with your savings in the first two years, you know, we'd still be paying about $400,000 a year to uh, pay for those changes. So if we are going to um, upgrade or retrofit, you know, our lighting and also there was some, when they did it, they also looked at our boilers and our ventilators and things like that. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be replacing boilers, we don't want to be, I don't think we want to be doing that work separate from when the boilers get put in. You know, so th I think this, I just don't think we should really act on anything in here for right now. And just want to hold on to I, I just yeah. wanted to let you know that we did it. It was that good that here. it was done. It was done. You know, that's um, good. It was thorough. But I, and I think it will just be more data for us to, to look good. at. So when we analyze what dovetails, what. Dovetails. Yeah, what works and what doesn't, and, and sequentially. You know, when we prioritize what we need to do based on that report once it's done. And in reading through this, it, it's really just looking at upgrading the lighting. This was specific to just lighting and boiler and heating and emergency management system. Right. So you could also do your boilers from, you know, uh, at home. The mm -hmm. kid custodian would get it on his iPhone and whatever or his computer. It would be a major upgrade, but we're dealing with 40-year-old boilers. Not that. It couldn't work because they said they could right. make it work, but if we're going to be replacing the boilers, right. Right. you right. know, right. why do we right. 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 do it separately if we choose to do it at all? 
Okay. So okay. just want to let you know that we had it done for the high school and the middle school. Okay. Any questions on that from anybody? Newport County Mentor Program. Um, this is the meeting that we go to once a month at different schools, and this month it will be at our school, and we'll have some lovely food from the culinary arts, I hope, because everyone enjoys that. And the last meeting was excellent. It had the uh, people from Ride there, and it, it's starting to expand. It's starting to, people are starting to connect, and we're reaching out and going everywhere so they won't forget about Little Tiverton. We make sure we show up at the table. So when grants are given out for Newport County, we'll get a piece of it. And uh, so Linda Lassen would maybe would like to talk about the different things we've been going to and doing since she's a school-based coordinator. And once the, when they go on a field trip, we need someone on site to tell the kids, this is the trip, get your, field, get your permission slip, and the bus is leaving now, and this and that, so. Um, so as Sally mentioned, um, Newport County Co-op Men Mentor Group um, meets once a month, um, and our last meeting was October 18th at Portsmouth High School. Um, some of the connections that have been made there through the business and industry, um, as Billy mentioned, we already have in place, but by being in attendance, it strengthens those relationships. We also find out about additional opportunities. Um, sometimes you tend to ask a question and, you know, someone will share information about a particular industry or business um, or actually a career path. So one of the uh, things that Billy just mentioned was Rhode Island Marine Trades Association and our relationship with Jen uh, Cornwell. Um, we've had her come in and come back down. They've had great success with the summer program. Um, she was able to get us a contact over at Electric Boat, so we'll be taking the kids out to Electric Boat after the first of the year because they have a pretty large uh, defense contract in right now. Um, but also part of that is a greenhouse grant that they've made available. Um, and through being at the meetings, we were kind of the first ones to grab the application and send it in so it'll pay for busing for our kids. Um, so 20 to 25 of our students will go out to Electric Boat and uh, and see the facility and you know and have a great time and it won't won't cost us anything another thing by bringing Jen into uh, the building here and kind of seeing what Billy does um, is we have been invited to the Providence boat show um, they're gonna have a youth display area we're still working out the logistics right now um, in terms of commitment time days transportation um, uh, all those kinds of things but one thing that we're really excited about is Zach Fenster's also been invited as well to have the kids there with the 3D printer. They're doing um, some sailboat design and printing of sailboats. If you haven't seen it, he's got these water troughs that we've talked about with the industrial fans. So the hope is that the kids will be there printing with the 3D printer and also doing some sailboat testing and racing um, at the same time in this youth display area at the Providence Boat Show. Um, the summer program, kind of, she came in, you kind of talk about it and this is what we're doing in engineering. So we've, um, we're developing a survey to kind of talk to the, the parents and get their feedback from the parents and students that, um, that were able to attend um, that program and kind of a lessons learned and how do we expand, how do we make it better. <coughs> um, we're going to then provide that feedback to RIMTA and we're going to write a proposal to um, actually not only ask them to do the boat building program again, as well as Zach Fenster's group would design maybe a couple weeks earlier, so you're incorporating two, two groups of students. Um, and then we've got some feelers out to some industry people about welding, which, okay, nobody passed out. Um, and having a group come in and, uh, and hopefully maybe actually putting a, uh, a, a boat trailer together, so as part of a, of a welding lesson and introducing welding as a possible career path to the students as part of the program. Um, as being there, we, I then got invited to this advisory, high school advisory board um, for Charaho as well as Warwick Vets for Marine Trades, and we were able to hook up with New England Tech um, and kind of talk to them about what they do in their intro classes and what we cover here, and hopefully they, they've, they've been able to share some information from us that we can incorporate to our classes here as far as, um, you know, some very intro and basic stuff. So that gives, kind of gives our kids a leg up. Um, but without these meetings and without those connections, um, you, you tend to, you know, not hear about this or be able to make that happen for the kids. Another thing um, that we were able to do is uh, Karen Healy um, is our local representative for Junior Achievement. We talked to her quite a bit and we had her in recently, so there's some talk about possibly adding uh, Junior Achievement to our Career Pathways classes, both the um, Careers with a Purpose as well as uh, Junior Achievement Success Skills. So kind of go over soft skill 
um, training, um, resume, resume writing, interviewing skills, dressing for an interview, those kinds of things. Um, they also have a job shadowing um, program that they run where um, there's actually funding and uh, we've, we've applied for some funding for a field trip um, and we met with guidance and kind of tried to pick a career path that's really popular right now. So we'll focus on hopefully um, athletic training, sports medicine, rehabilitation, physical therapy, something focused around that through junior achievement if, if that all uh, comes into place. Um, I'll be attending a URI Transportation Center Workforce Development Conference, um, which URI has an entire program for middle school as well as high school kids, um, and has to do with careers in the transportation industry, whether it's ferries or the train or the T or whatever it may be. So it kind of gives them a lot of exposure, bridge building, those kinds of things. Um, another thing that we were able to do is get some feedback from um, the Southern New England defense industry on what they're seeing as some hot buttons or career paths. And one of them is cybersecurity. Um, so we were able to receive some information about cybersecurity. Um, but that's great, but what do you do? So part of the Newport County Mentor Group is we're taking a look at Raytheon, and hopefully we'll be able to do a summer program out at Raytheon with cybersecurity like we did with the rocket program um, this summer. So there'll be representatives from, from each one of the schools that would be chosen or two, one or two students to be able to go out and do that. Um, we'll be attending, um, there's a 3D technology conference at Bryant University that we've also um, been invited to attend because of our 3D printer and <coughs> kind of some, uh, you know, questions that we've been asking of folks, you know, so they've invited us to say, hey, why don't you come out and, and kind of take a look at some of the vendors that are going to be there. Um, other than that, I, another thing that we've had, um, and it's really around the Marie's trades, is we've made a, we've made a connection with um, an individual in the sailing industry who has great ties to the Sailing Yacht Research Foundation. Um, and they were looking for three pilot schools. They're looking to develop curriculum around um, sailboat design. So it's Middletown, uh, the Met, and Tiverton at this point. Um, and we're still in the process of, of just kind of meeting with them. And we've let them know what's going to work for our students, what, you know, what, what's in it for us, um, what would work best with the group down there, and what our needs are. So they've gone back to their group and, and they're seeing what they're come up with. But even at the end, it's still those industry connections um, that, that we've been able to make for our students. I think that's it. That, that gentleman that um, Linda just spoke of was Coop. We talked about him last year. He came last year to meet us. So when we were around the table and they said there were three schools and it was going to be Middletown and then another school and then they didn't have the, le the third one and we're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Tivin and Tivin. And so yeah. we jumped right in on that. So I'm glad because he had already been down here and he came a second time. And, and our, our program has built so much, built up so much just since last year, having those different components in there. It's almost like STEAM now because we have the art teacher down there also. Yep. So it's very exciting and, you know, we get credentialing and everything. We're moving forward with that. Yeah. And, and then one other thing that I didn't mention is we've made a connection with a gentleman by the name of Mark Stalls. He used to work for MakerBart, which is the manufacturer of our 3D printer. Um, he's left them and he's kind of gone out on his own and he does a lot of different things. And one of the things he actually does is he builds 3D prosthetic hands for third world countries and for children in need. Um, so hopefully somewhere down the road, maybe we can do some type of a project with, uh, with developing a prosthetic hand with our students that's, that we can donate, so. Okay. Anybody have any questions about all these exciting things that are going on? Okay. We'll just keep showing up at every place <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> um, now we have Tiverton Prevention Coalition, Rebecca. to remind me exactly like how long she's been here <laughs> five five weeks officially five weeks um, Tiverton Prevention Coalition I don't have quite as much to uh, to announce as um, as Linda did but we um, we have a really exciting project going on right now with um, with seven students two seniors um, three thought juniors a sophomore and a freshman, I hope that comes to seven, because that's what I remember. And those students are, um, last year they did a project called Unmarketing Weed, where they were communicating to their peers some of the myths, um, perceptions versus reality around marijuana use. Um, and they 
their goal last year was to decrease the number of Tiverton High School students who felt like smoking marijuana every day was no big deal. 56% um, of our kids, when surveyed last year, um, actually two years ago, said smoking daily didn't cause any risk of harm, marijuana. 97% said smoking cigarettes every day could cause risk of harm. So there's a big disconnect. Somehow they're not connecting the dangers of marijuana smoking in the same way they connect the dangers of cigarette smoking. So this group of students last year really worked on um, closing that gap around perception versus reality. So we thought, I thought the project was done at the end of the last year. Um, but they're a very eager group, and they wanted to reconvene this year and take a look at some other things. Um, so we've got a couple of new students. We have a couple of students that graduated. And their mission this year is to bring the message about perception versus reality to parents. And they're really targeting um, parents of eighth graders who will be coming into the high school next year, with students coming to the high school next year, to give parents some tools to be able to talk with their kids. And one of this, the pl their plans is develop a parent handbook um, sort of focusing on what teens think parents need to know about marijuana in order to communicate to their kids. Um, so they're, they're working with a marketing team called O'Toole and Parr, um, who we worked with last year, and they're kind of taking the kids through the whole development process of how do you come up with some sort of a booklet that um, provides some real information and fulfills a real need. So one of the things that they've started with right now is that the kids are gonna, our, our students are going to be doing key informant interviews with some local parents. They've got a series of key informant questions that they developed to gain information about um, from the parents about what would be really useful information. When they've compiled those um, questions from their key informants, then they're going to be putting together a really professional handbook that they want to, um, that will be published, the coalition will publish it, and then in the springtime they want to do a presentation for parents, hopefully tying it in sometime around the time when eighth grade parents are coming up to the high school for their um, orientation and their kids will be coming up. Um, so that's sort of, the, that's their big plan right now. Um, in the meantime, because that's all plan and work and, you know, kids really want instant gratification, as do I. They are also, during, uh, during advisory period on Thursdays, they're going into ninth grade advisory classes and doing a presentation about the consequences of marijuana. So they're talking to ninth graders, and they're talking about um, you know, the risks associated. And it's, it's really not a, um, it's more of a demonstration opportunity. They do some activities and get the kids involved, and they talk about um, the fact that they have decided to maintain um, a drug-free lifestyle. They introduce themselves. Most of them are upperclassmen, although we do have one ninth grader participating. And sort of encouraging those ninth graders to reach out to other people, um, themselves included, come up, come up, meet them in the hallway or whatever, if they want support, if they want to talk more in depth. Um, but they're really recognizing the fact that a very small portion of ninth graders are smoking marijuana. We know that as each grade progresses, the number gets higher. But their concept is that if we can get <coughs> more kids talking about how, you know, most people don't use this drug, it becomes normal not to use it. Rather than the flip side, where if you ask a student, a young student, how many older kids smoke marijuana, they say, oh, everybody does. Because that's what they kind of sense, that it's a much more pervasive issue than what it is. And these older students have the understanding that if you help them to see that's not a choice that has to be made, that's not a direction you have to follow, it gives them a little bit more of an opportunity to stand up for themselves and what they want to do. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's what the unmarketing weed students have kind of up their sleeves. Um, and then a side thing that we're working on, uh, we developed a subcommittee around youth messages. And um, Suzette had volunteered to be a member of that group and we've met one time so far this school year, and really what we, what we were talking about was the need to bring prevention and the focus about being healthy to, to a much lower grade. We do a lot of work with high school students, partly because I'm based here. We also talk a lot about middle school students. Um, but where prevention really starts is before they even hit the elementary school. 
Um, so the very least, we need to be bringing that message down and not so much focusing it on substance abuse related topics, but on um, success begins with healthy choices and talking about healthy, good, safe choices across the board. Um, so that's gonna be sort of the charge of that subcommittee. And we'll be, we'll be working um, through probably the next four months to develop, that subcommittee will develop some recommendations for the coalition and the coalition will be able to prioritize from, from those recommendations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, would you, would you um, since there are some parents here from Fort Barton, would you like to okay. take 7i sure. out of? Mm -hmm. I have a motion for that. I'll make a motion to move up 7i. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. You have a request um, from the Fort Barton PTO to uh, have a fundraiser entitled Circus Smirkus, and I will turn it over to Mrs. Wardell or Mrs. Sutherland who is well, here, I believe. I'm, I'm a little confused. I, it's not really a request. I thought it was, it looks like it's already been denied. Does well, I have, I, have, I have told the principal that I can't support it, but I felt that um, it still should be brought to your okay. attention. So I okay. give the parents okay. the opportunity sure. to speak to you. Of course. No, that's <laughs> okay. Um, the program is uh, a circus professional comes to the school. Uh, this organization, they're a nonprofit, and they go around to area schools, and actually they'd be coming quite a way for us um, because they're in Vermont. Um, but what they do is they do a theater, like a, a circus arts program for the kids, and you have a choice of doing it within the school day or after school. And so we were thinking that this would be a really neat idea for the third and fourth graders in our school um, they only take eight-year-olds and, and up, so we couldn't do the younger grades. Uh, for them to have, it's an intensive uh, five-day program where it would be two and a half hours where the kids would learn different circus arts. Um, and we're not talking about high wires or anything like that. We're talking about spinning plates, um, balancing on low beams, uh, just a lot of different kind of things that you would, you would see in the circus. Uh, it's interactive. The kids would be busy for that two and a half hours. Uh, the PTO would be picking up part of the fee because it costs um, 1875 for the week to have the professional come in. We would have, the parents would pay $50 of the tuition and the PTO would subsidize the additional 25 per student. And uh, it's, it's not really a fundraiser per se because we are subsidizing the extra $25 per student. Um, we figured that was a reasonable amount of money because most of the after-school programs that are in town, um, like TASA for instance, uh, they charge $60 for four weeks. This would be a five-day program all in one week. Um, the one thing that we could make money on, which would, be, which would go towards, um, we would have to pay room and board for the person who came down. Um, so we would be <coughs> paying, uh, we would be selling uh, treats at the performance on uh, Friday evening, there's a public performance that could be had. We would sell tickets to that. Uh, invite all the parents to come, anybody in the community who would like to come and the kids perform. Uh, the company brings all of the materials that the kids need. Uh, they bring costumes. The PTO would provide adults to supervise the kids. It would all take place at Fort Barton um, with the exception of uh, yeah, however many people we, we think are interested in the program, we might have to ask maybe to use the middle school or the high school, depending on how many people that we would have interested in going. And um, we agreed with Circus Smirkus that we would, um, we would sell circus-related items, like some of the, the tricks that the kids are using. Um, we would sell those materials at the final performance, and the PTO would, would keep 10% of the gross proceeds. Just so you, my, my concerns and the reason why I can't support it is, first of all, it, it's my understanding is only 25 students are involved and there are over the close to 200 students in the building. Um, I view it almost as a pay to play yeah, for those 20, it it whether it's 25 children or 75 kids or even all the kids, to ask them to pay to participate is something that we don't support and it's illegal in Rhode Island to say, you pay this dollars, you can participate. Well, that was my question. But How if is you don't, not paid for? well, I, well, that's why I said no. 
Oh, is this okay. after school program? Yeah. It's still, but it's still under the auspices of. Because it's PTO uh, sponsored. It's PTO sponsored. Well, it comes under our umbrella. It's, and they're using it's part it's of their the funds district. to. I also had the issue of selling items to students. It's a captive audience. Yeah. And also liability. You know, the ball that they talk about, I saw the little girl on it. If she fell or someone fell or hurt themselves, you know, there's liability issues. I just, I just couldn't support this one. Circus Marcus uh, has liability insurance, as does the PTO. And I actually have a copy of our certificate of liability if you would like that. And my um. last objection is that there's four workshops that would be offered to students during the day and that would take the kids out of the classroom. I just, if the, you know, I just didn't, I couldn't support it. Well, we can work, if, if that's the issue then, I'm sure that we could work something out where we wouldn't do the um, in-class workshops, which even though the in-class workshops would be um, provided for the whole school and quite well, possibly could be done. workshops that say four separate workshops and then there would be one for the whole school. So it's only 25 kids. So the, it's for the 25, they get trained. That's so it's my not all inclusive, like That's our correct. programs that are usually open to everyone. It's not open to everyone. And then it, so it's, it's our district that would be doing that. It's not like TASA, which is a separate nonprofit no, that does everything. It falls it's, under our umbrella. It's, it's a public school. Well, then I, I, my, I just don't see how it's not pay to play. I mean, that it is pay to play. You're, you're charging to. Um, participate so, in so a district sponsored in, act in a extracurricular activity and it's not open to everybody activity. even if you could get over the, the pay to now you could say well, right. i mean there's lots not of open issues, to everybody. but but the one it's like even if you said well it's donation only um and everybody would have to donate fifty dollars for their you know you could do that which is which is what we but do. everyone doesn't but participate it, right and then there's the other issues like you you know i mean i know you 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 just gave about four but that certainly seems one of the big ones. I think people get very confused about the pay. Yeah, so I, actually, I was just going to make that point um, so that everybody understands because it's, it's not something that I fully understood and perhaps still don't understand. But it is Rhode Island law that you cannot charge for school sponsored extracurricular or after school programs. That's law. So what so, you're saying is that all of the after-school programs that PTO has provided in the past years where we have charged was for so the materials illegal. are illegal? So, so that's, yes. I, I, as far donation. as I understand it, that is correct. Now, there is a way, not around it, but what you can do is if you are offering an after-school program, you can make a statement suggesting a donation. But it's, you have to be very careful about how you make that suggestion and that it is a donation. It is not a fee, and that's why people say pay to play. It's, it's, you cannot make it a fee-based activity and to participate in. Exclude anyone and, and you can you exclude someone. Enough. And you can include verbiage like if you know we don't get sufficient donations to support it, the program won't happen and that maybe we'll you know, spur some people to make the donation that's suggested, but you you cannot require fees from the participants in order to participate if it is sponsored by the school and PTO sponsored events are our school sponsored events because of the relationship between the PTO and the school. the school system. Now, if a group of parents separately incorporated as like whatever they wanted to incorporate themselves as a nonprofit or a for-profit or a you know charitable organization of some sort they can then run whatever program they want and charge whatever they want they would of course then have to get if they were going to do it in a school building they would have to then get permission to use the school building because they are now an extra mural program right so that's that's kind of where I think it's a little confusing. we get into some trouble. And again, I'm not sure that everyone fully understands that. The second question I have is I'm not clear 
yet whether or not this is a is it a fundraiser or is it an enrichment program or is it somehow trying it's to an do after both? school program if it um, okay. if it earns money that's fine but we're not billing okay. it as a fundraiser all right we're going to have extra expenses other than the students who are coming because we have to provide room and board for the artist. Right. And the, and the model you're trying to use is participants would pay $50, $70, so, or $25 would then come from the PTO for right, each Right, because the total for each student is $75 to right. participate. Um, up to 25 students, eighteen seventy-five dollars flat rate. So, so, so I think right there we, yeah. want to follow the, we run, follow the law and that that would probably okay. make it illegal actually and we, we are working on currently myself carol and mr rear are working on a policy to make this clear because so, we so know there is a lot of confusion know? that would be appreciated we because we've run after school true. programs yeah. for years now right. and did not realize that well and that's also one of the problems with after school programs not coming before the board to get approved because that's also policy okay. that hasn't been followed had you done that, we would have said you can't. Right. Charge. It has to be worded right. as so donation. So that's why we're trying but to. Why like, we're, that's why we're creating the policy yeah, so we have a framework to. This, we don't groups like yourselves. Hard. Right. No, no. But we want to make it clear as well right. so right. that you know. I mean, so. an artist in residence programs are wonderful, and we've had them before at Fort Barton, um, but there was no part that the student <coughs> had to pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it was the, open to everyone. Right, the artist came in. In fact, I think all of the activities with the artist <coughs> took place during the school day in the course of that one week, and, mm -hmm. and the artist visited every it class. It is a room. wonderful idea. Yeah. If so in the future that the PTO could arrange to have artists in residence during the school day, is something is that something that the school committee would consider? Yes. Uh, I, I think we're, we're open to all considerations, right. actually. Yeah. I would I consider the, almost the, anything. I mean, the it, goal is to create a, a framework protocols for just not PTO folks like yourself but for teachers or administrators who want to create something like I understand what you're trying to do and I and I, I commend you for it anything that our kids can do after school is a good it's really thing. good um, but there are guidelines that we have to you know abide by is to make those guidelines known to everyone right so here they are and one of the guidelines would be you know bring it before us so we can approve it Right. You know, and say, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great idea. You can do that. Or, uh, you know, we got some issues with whatever the proposal might be. Which, you know, obviously, we don't want to go against what the policies are and what the law is. Um, if right. we had known that, we wouldn't have been oh, here today oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> pitching right. this to you. <laughs> well, I have to say, I, you know, <laughs> frankly, I've been on the board for a year, and it's something that I've only become aware of probably right. in the last two or three months. So, And right. I read some really good stuff in here. There was curriculum for the PE teacher, and there was, you know, all the goals for the there is a lot of good There's stuff in there, really, yeah, and it really would be is. great. And we were just yeah. worried that because of the, the switch to core curriculum, that um, we didn't know Absolutely. if they yeah. they have already caught up with that with their curriculum, and we weren't confident that we could bring that to the school and get that approved within the confines of the school day. We well, were trying to blend it in. And Rhode, right. Island, Rhode Island is unique in that Massachusetts allows pay to play. Right. Vermont allows pay to play. So a lot of the places where smirk, Circus Mercus has been, yes, yeah. wasn't mm -hmm. an issue. Because nope. I read the list and it was mostly from Oh, Massachusetts. yeah, yep. Massachusetts, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But no Rhode Island. But yeah, we so certainly, I mean, we, we, we appreciate what you're trying to do, really, honestly. <laughs> okay, well, I will propose that uh, I will not be at Fort Barton next year, but I will propose oh, it for uh, so the people who are there to give it a whirl next year and see if they can do it during the yeah. school day. I think, I think the other, you know, just sort of hearing what has been brought up before, I think the other thing that you would also want to be mindful of is a program that would be open to some students but not others or a program that you know is going to be a very intense experience for 25 and maybe some experience for the other 150 or something like that right I think what we were thinking was that um, this would take the place of one of the after-school programs for the third right. and fourth graders we still mm -hmm. would offer the first and second graders uh, programs which obviously we're going to have to rethink now um, yeah. given that we know these these rules now yeah. um, but also the thing about doing this for the third and fourth grader graders is that it's this great team building yeah. activity right. that they can do preparing them for middle school where they're going to yes. be doing activities with other yeah, kids and yeah. and it would have been a great experience but um, we'll see focus. maybe if we can bring it back to you next year and okay. like I said, we'll yeah. have those policies, yes <laughs> so it'll be confusing I mean when we're confused 
you know. <laughs> and, you know, frankly, there's other programs that, you know, in retrospect, we realized that probably was not appropriate. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, but you can't unring the bell. Right. So. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. AP results. AP results. Okay. Um, these, uh, the data that uh, is in your packet and that we're going to show everybody here uh, is a three-year uh, comparison <coughs> of how our students scored. Um, uh, the data, uh, again, goes from 09. Actually, I go five years. It should be 09 through 13. Um, and we also, you know, when we do these comparisons as we have in the past, we compare the state as well as what they call the global average. Oh, where is this? Al, oh, here we go. 56 students uh, took uh, 80 AP exams in calculus, English language composition, English literature, composition, psychology, Spanish, and U.S. history. Uh, this year we saw a slight dip as uh, I got graphs uh, that we'll go over. 54% uh, of our students received a score of three or higher, which in most colleges, uh, three is the, the minimum that they'll accept for college credit. Some uh, have it only a four or a five, but three is still the, uh, the, st the standard that uh, schools use. Uh, Rhode Island, the average uh, for 2013 was 63%, and the global was 61%. Bill, can I ask a question? Yes. So, I don't know why it's repeating. Yeah. I don't know. You're going really to you're gonna make them start seizing. I'm sorry. So <laughs> I don't want you to build into a seizing. So 54% 54 of TH, THS students have chained a score of 3 plus. Right. Does that mean half of 56 students got a score of 3 plus, yes. or half of the 80 exams attempted? Half of the 80, I believe. I'm, I think it's, when I go to the data, I think it's the number of uh, past exams that we passed. Okay. I may have missed Because obviously that. some students took more than one exam, right, maybe right. some took three. Not to give you a seizure. Art was the first time we've offered art uh, in a long time. Um, art, uh, we had 100% uh, of our students received a three or higher. How many students? I want to say five or six. And global is national? Or? No, global, global is global. Is international. Six yeah, global art. Uh, the glo uh, global is international. Global. The world, yes. the world, Russia, China, yeah. France, oh, no, that's North, Korea. Korea. North Korea. North <laughs> Korea. <laughs> it, it was something Yemen. similar. It was okay. five or six. Yeah, students. it's five yeah. or six. At, yeah. okay. It's not many. Uh, calculus. Uh, here's our trend. Um, you can see that we've never trended well uh, in calculus. Uh, we have, ch uh, in the process of, uh, we've changed the uh, teachers' uh, teaching assignments, uh, and we've uh, increased the training sessions, you've got a backup from Mr. Fassett as to how he uh, is addressing it <coughs> at the high school level or in the classroom level. What's the raw number there? 13% uh, for us. Now, how many how many students took the calculus uh, AP exam? There were 15 students 15. last year. And how many students so got one three passed. of the 13%? Oh, two. Two. Two, two out of the 15. Um, it, have we always had um, the same individual teaching? No. Okay, and of the individuals, the variety of individuals who have been teaching, have they all been trained yes. in teaching AP calculus? They all received the training before they began teaching. Yes. Now, when was it that we started essentially making the kids take it? Last year? Take the exam? Yeah. yeah. So, for instance, we, we could have had strong encouragement three years ago, probably two years ago, is the mandated language. I so this would have been the second year second we sort year. of mandated. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, in AP English Language Comp, seventy-seven percent of our students who took this the, the test received a three or higher. Rhode Island was sixty-seven, while the global average was fifty-six. And you can see <coughs> a couple years in nine uh, in eleven, uh, we had a hundred percent attainment rate and. The same teachers have been teaching the AP English uh, throughout, except for one break where the teacher was on maternity leave. Again, AP uh, Lit and Composition, uh, historically, um, we've done uh, above this, both the state and uh, Rhode Island average, I'm uh, sorry, the state and global average. 
at least on check one. Psychology, again, this was the same teacher, but he was out on uh, paternity leave uh, this past year. He also, uh, and Steve, what, what else was the teacher doing? Well, it's, this particular Maybe. teacher is a department chair, and there are a lot of administrative duties that they get pulled up for, curriculum duties, so that does impact on a number of classes that they're going to do. But as you see, he's the same person who was also <coughs> for the other grades as well, so. Um, you know, again, this isn't something where you can't use cohorts. It's a trend. And do, do we know though, Rhode Island? Because our policy is, we sort of strongly encourage, mandate that they take it. Do we know across Rhode Island if that's the policy? Because I know there are some schools that I know that I have friends that yeah, go it depends to. Depends what your head basically is. Basically, they don't. Yeah. They don't well, encourage that everyone takes it. So if you're not encouraging everyone to take it, you could have it's skewing results. Yes. Yeah. I, They're I not taking it. I mean, we're we're falling under access and opportunity, which is probably a decade old now, mm -hmm. with the you know performance-based graduation requirements. And um, well, we, we don't we know. Encourage, those, we encourage it, all students. Deb, I think it varies. But we don't know across the state. No, of whether there's no yeah, data. We're, 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 no. So let me just interpret. Probably confident that, that there are other local. No, I was just curious what the state policy, if there was kind of a state. We felt for our own individual needs that the kids needed to be sure. exposed to the assessment. Yeah, sure. great. Yeah. But your point is, if you're comparing to Rhode Island and only two students from one, you know, you may have 20 students from but one town to who are taking the class, but only two but are right. going to take the test. have the nerve to take the test. But they're the best, two best students. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And so their pass rate is going to be 100 sure. percent. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. But, but yeah, any what? No, yeah. I just want to. I, I just want to put my own spin on this data. Okay. So, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. So we are putting <coughs> AP courses are taken by top students. Am I right? Would we agree? Yeah. Uh, are these students wow. college bound? Yes or no? Yes. Otherwise, yes. why Most would they the take Most AP courses? Most of them are. So out of a cohort in calculus where you have 15 students, two of these students, why do they take calculus? Because they are planning to take sciences and engineering in college. So this means two of our top students only meet the minimum requirements to slide through, and this is only for certain colleges which take three because quite a few of them take four. So this means that we are not meeting the educational outcomes of these courses for what kind of percentage of the students? So this basically means that this course <coughs> is useless. Because if we are going to no. say that, no, just a second. Well, no. If we are going to say that, that only 20% of our students meet educational objectives of any course within our system, no matter what it is, you start questioning what are we teaching. Uh, so uh, the same thing, if you see if you see things are done right in certain subjects and they are not done in some other subjects. Because this is obvious and it makes no sense to say, well, do people have to take the courses in some other communities or not? Because just the, the, the raw data, no matter what it is, not comparing it to anyone else, is, 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 gives me goosebumps when I think about it. And I, I absolutely know what's behind this, and obviously this is yeah. not for public at, session, at, but it's... At the very least, you're confusing association with causation. Right. So, you know, maybe that has something to do with it, but what? That, that the students are not passing doesn't necessarily invalidate the course, doesn't necessarily... Uh, that's not necessarily the, the only objective of the course. Um, That's the metric and, at the end of it, right? No. No. Which, it might be it's your not. metric, but I don't think we're all saying it's our metric. And, and, you don't, and you're also ascribing motivation to the students based on the fact that they take the test. <coughs> um, but you don't really have any idea that that's actually their motivation. Their motivation may be to see what it's like. Their motivation may be to do as well as they can, take as many courses as they can because it makes their college application look good. But it doesn't mean that they want to test out of the course in their freshman year. It doesn't mean even that they want to go to college. I mean, you know, you, you can't necessarily ascribe that motivation to them. Would it be good if the scores were better? Of course it would be good if the scores were better. But I'm not sure that you can 
draw all the conclusions, even start to draw the conclusions that you're drawing from it. But why don't we, I, I would prefer that we let Bill go through the presentation to sort of see what, what it is. And, and again, these are percentages, not necessarily the absolute numbers, but. So where were we, Spanish? We're Spanish. Spanish. And again, in 2012, the teacher was on maternity, but you can see the other four years, again, this is why it's trend, you've got to look at each course separately. And, you know, trend-wise, the students historically do very well. I believe she was on maternity leave fall of 2012, 2013, because my son was in that class. So, so those scores, um, I mean, the scores weren't impacted. No, she was wasn't here that year. 2012, 2012, 2013. No, she wasn't here for 2012. Oh, she was out I don't that believe year? So. I'll double check, but I, I'll double check because that would be 13. rare that the, the, the students would, would, well, not rare, but I'd double check. Okay. That could yeah. be mistaken. She was out on maternity. We can agree on that at some point. Uh, U.S. history, being a former USAP teacher, uh, again, just like with calculus, uh, these are scores, again, I'm, I'm not thrilled with them either. Steve has in his write-up what uh, he's trying to do to address the issue. Again, we uh, changed instructors, um, and there's no reason for why these scores shouldn't be higher uh, as well for U.S. history and, and calculus. Now, going to by similar communities, and, and this gives you some idea. The, sim the communities that I use and you know, it gets, you know, people misconstrue it. What I mean by similar communities, we're looking at free and reduced hot lunch percentages, special ed percentages, and family mean income. Okay, so we're, they're relatively that's close. Different. So that's why you see kind of, you know, Bristol, Warren, Burrowville, they're all, the, and some districts are much bigger than ours. Coventry has mm -hmm. over 5,000 students, as does uh, <coughs> Cumberland. Uh, that's why you have, I had to create a new access, because they had 150 students um, in, uh, can't see the color, uh, Middletown, was it Middletown? Mm -hmm. um, you know, take that many. And the point is, there's three categories, and this is from RIDE. RIDE doesn't give us, or at least access, for you on the outside looking in, what specific courses they take. They give you number of AP exams taken, the number of students who took them, and, the, and most importantly, the percent passing. Mm -hmm. I think because that's- numbers mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Right, so that. it's your percent passing, I think is if you want to compare right. in, in nine ten, uh, we were I think third place or tied uh, mm -hmm. for third yeah. um, with Middletown with the percent pass. So you know again, look at all the you know you look at some of those other districts and I'm not going to compare us. But they had a lot of kids take it, but the percent passing was wasn't as high. Now this is overall. This is for nine ten all our kids mm -hmm. who took it. Right, all all of all the subject areas and the state average. If I can go back. 60%. So we were, I believe, at 61 mm -hmm. that year. So we were just over the state average. At, uh, 10 and 11, it was 58%. Uh, again, we were very close to Cumberland. In the percent passing, uh, we were at 66, 67%. And for the last year, it was available, which was last year. Um, again, we were uh, over uh, 60 percentile mark, according to to rise data. So, you know, if, if we compare it to similar districts, and that's really the closest I could get, uh, we're pretty much um, in the middle. You know, when we compare ourselves to like-minded districts in a given year, and some years we're a little bit higher. And Steve is available for any questions you may have regarding his I, his memo or. I have a question in general about how we look at this. So if in Spanish we are doing 100%, and if in English we are doing 100, and if in, let us assume, history we are doing 100, and in calculus we are doing zero, and this translates to 95, this means we are excellent, am I right? We don't have a problem. No, we have to look at this data in isolation per subject and, and basically tackle these things one by one, as opposed to saying, when we add all these numbers, everything is fine. I don't think I said everything was fine. Yeah. No, I understand, but, but uh, like you said that, well, I guess maybe people saying, 
I would love to have parents come forward and simply say, my child took AP course and this was just to, to try to do something. No, these kids go to AP courses and I, I have some credentials on that subject because three of my kids did take AP courses and I understand and I talk to their friends and et cetera and, and they know exactly what they are taking these courses. And this is not necessarily to, to um, uh, obviously one of the objectives is to count it towards the college credits, maybe. But at the same time, it's a challenge, it's a proof of how well you are doing in, in, in as, as a senior in classes. And these numbers do matter, and um, obviously I cannot disclose these things, but I know exactly what's behind these numbers. And that, that's, there is, this, this has to be corrected, because this is a resource we are allocating, and if we are going to say it's okay, 21% of students in, in an AP course are getting three, which is absolutely a minimum grade uh, to, to, to count it, then in my opinion there's something dramatically wrong. And if we will start looking at higher numbers, because then we can say there are some colleges which don't take anything until four. Four is a true, uh, pretty much almost every college accepts four or better. Some of them accept three. Then we will see how we are doing. And uh, what? I don't think there is better than four, is it? Yes, five. Yes, it's five. Yes, five. So, um, if we are okay, and I'm the only voice who is saying that there are problems when we see that when we see something like this, that's all right. I think in my report, I probably have the largest narrative regarding calculus. Mm -hmm. I met with all of the instructors, all of the department heads, all of the instructors who've had um, accessibility to the instructional planning reports. They get that every year. They get every year they get the opportunity um, to go to professional development offered by the college board. We encourage it. We support it. Um, we also encourage taking the teachers offline so they can consult and interact with one another regarding the cohort. They're both teaching a lot of the same kids, different subject matter. English is different from AP Calculus, as is AP Chem is different from Psychology. Um, I have four new teachers in the AP program this year that had training. Um, we have two new courses that have come back, fortunately, uh, with 23 students, AP Biology and AP Chemistry. The psychology was concerning. I met with that teacher. Uh, the calculus was obviously concerning. I've met with that teacher. Uh, not to be redundant, it was it was a large course last year. Our average was eight students over the last four years. It was 15 last year. Good for those kids for wanting to take AP calculus. Um, the instructor will be attending a college board offer workshop in May. Um, we reviewed the instructional report together. We'll make every attempt not to have that class missed or cancel or have that instructor pull out of the course for any reason. Um, additionally, the department here had, has agreed to substitute, and she teaches the other honors calculus section. She will substitute on the day that the AP calculus instructor is out sick or out on personal reasons. And then finally, all aspects of the course and the program will be assessed when the scores are reported in July, all aspects. Um, so that's all of the objective information So there's a lot of changes going on right now, um, and the courses that have obviously been challenged, or the course that's been challenged over the last couple of year, uh, couple of years, um, you know, we, we'll be assessing that all year and at the end of the year. And, and obviously, if things need to be done differently, there will be. Mm -hmm. What about psychology course? I'm sorry. What about psychology? The teacher wasn't here last year for <coughs> part of the year. He was out on paternity leave. That was a large part of it. Simply wasn't. He wasn't in the classroom. So we have to figure out how we deal with this because if we make a commitment to, if we make a commitment that we are going to teach an AP course on any subject, or actually any course on any subject, uh, if this is um, even the lowest level course. Uh, we cannot, as a district, simply say, well, the teacher was on particular leave, so let's just put a substitute who is going to sit in the classroom and say, you kids just do something, that we still have to meet the 
educational objective, we still have to teach these kids at the level appropriate to the course, correct? We try, but so I, I understand. But, but there's no AP bullpen to, I, I understand. to, to call. I understand. And I but can't tell somebody when they can take paternity leave or maternity leave. Correct. I can't do that. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. We want to have the teachers there and have continuity and, and, and things of that nature. We want to uh, try to ensure that the best we can. But sometimes, my point is, it's not as easy as the, that. If somebody says, I'm, I'm going to take six weeks for paternity leave, I mean, that, that's a contractual issue. I can't say you can't take it. And if they, Sometimes they may not know they're going to be taking the leave, you know, until the, the, once the school year starts. So we have to put up with the situation. I understand our resources, but we just have to be blunt about this. That you take the course, and potentially you might not get the course because no promises are made. We don't. We have no resources to actually guarantee that you will be able to complete the course as promised. That's true of every AP class. It is something yes. that yes. someone is trying to do above yeah. and beyond. I'm not the talking because I'm just making a statement. Yeah. Right. That's, I agree. Right. And 13% passing is not an aspiration, <coughs> but I don't think it's necessarily. It's desperation. It's desperation? Yes. <laughs> if certain people, a certain percent of students pass, we're in trouble. I don't think I, I'm not sure what conclusions you can make. I'm not in, in to say, well, it's it's a complete failure of the students, or it's a complete failure of the students, or it's complete a complete failure, failure of, of the, the system. system. Of the system. That, that's not a valid conclusion. It may be ultimately the conclusion you come to, but it's not a valid conclusion at this level of understanding. At the at the very least, you would really need to know what are other districts doing in terms of requirements to take the test if they are taking the class. And the only real comparator we have is looking at similar districts over time. But that was actually just aggregate. It wasn't broken down into calculus itself. So, I couldn't. But we do know from the, the state average that we're below the state average. I mean, we do know that. Well, right. And it's, and, and it's as something, again, We've already we have four new teachers teaching AP this year. There's a reason for why we have new teachers right. teaching, right. without going farther than that, because we have recognized that we have to address the situation. Calculus is on on the radar screen, and hope you know we'll take the necessary steps if we don't see the improvements. We need beyond no, that. And so and I completely support the night, and I you know, without applaud those maneuvers. But I'm I'm just trying to point out that we can't yes. make the conclusions that I think Mr. Gandhi really wants us to make. So. Which conclusions? What, what conclusions are not just that which I'm making? That the students are only taking it because they want to go to college and they want to major in math and science and <coughs> therefore the fact that they did not achieve a three is a, is a failure. Uh, it doesn't hold. Well, if I could, I think, you know, we have a little bit as I too have experience who have a child who's taken AP classes, it's a little bit different now. We've now weighted these AP classes differently. We now, the kids now get, uh, we, ex we weight AP classes and my child was the first one in the class. So there is a benefit to them rank wise and GPA wise to take the AP class. So it may be that they're not just taking it because oh, I want extra, again, I don't think not for this data, solutions. not for this data, not because this, this data, so but, this but data I'm, does not, not have your factor. But I'm saying going forward, you can't Let's necessarily start. draw those conclusions. I also did a little bit of research in the College Board, which actually um, is responsible for these AP exams. Um, they said the third international math and science test, which is the TIMS, found <laughs> that the U.S. advanced math and physics students were not leading. They were lagging behind other students. Um, U U.S. students did not fare well in things like AP Calc, but what they did find, the exception, AP Calc students, even those AP Calc students who earned a grade of one or two, demonstrated the same level of math achievement as students from top performing nations. So the conclusion was that, y yes, you want threes and fours, but don't discount a score of a one or a two um, 
because there is some knowledge comparable to that of some high achieving calcs and physics students in the world from that. So, I mean, I don't want, yes, we shouldn't ignore the data, 13% is low, <coughs> but let's not discount the value of having a child take an AP class. Like, I'm not sure that the only value should be you got a three or a four. I have a problem with the paradigm we are using here. <coughs> we are here to look at a very objective, cold look at data. If there is a problem, our job is to say there is a problem. If there is an achievement, it's our problem to point this out. Our well, job I'm is not to cover up too, things. Mr. McCondy, maybe you don't agree I understand. With that. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm but saying we are doing okay too. because we no, can. We're not, we, saying, we're we're not, not doing saying okay. that. We're, we're saying, saying that. there's value. Or we don't but have a I problem. Think that we do have a problem. Motive and you're, you're drawing conclusions which are not necessarily valid. Right. Okay, Mr. We, Mr. Fazette. We, we defer on this opinion. Mr. Burgundy. Mr. Fazette has addressed this. We're not saying this is okay. I can tell you when my eldest daughter was here, there were no AP classes at all. It was only honors. And she went on to University of Rochester in a very high level medical program. It hurt her because we didn't have the experience of even having her in an AP class, never mind a one or a four. So I think what Mrs. Polish says is be just being exposed to that is really a positive thing. And we want them all to do their best, but she caught up, of course, and, and did very well. But. I'm so happy to have all these opportunities here now. Since I've been sitting here nine years, I only see the opportunities growing and expanding. And I think Mr. Vizette has addressed exactly what they're gonna do. Okay is never okay for us, we know that. Okay, anybody else have anything? Okay, Mr. Mr. Reardon. The next issue, it's really more notification from Mr. Cabral, excuse me, regarding uh, Ranger's application. Uh, for consideration for that $10,000 grant from Feinstein, which uh, the middle school received last year. So it's under consideration by Feinstein. So. What are the plans for the grant money? Yeah. What would it be used for? <laughs> one, of the, one of the first plans was the teaching needs. But I know there's, there's three or four teachers that look at the almost. Uh, oh. you know, it'll be the, the classroom needs. Mm -hmm. And are there any restrictions on what you can use no, this money no. for? No. It's part of the Feinstein program. Okay, we'll call him now after we vote. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would, I meant I was on this, I thought he already had. So we just need to say it's okay. permission to pursue the grant? <coughs> so, so moved. Second. All those in favor, any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cabral. The last item is a request from Middletown Town Councilors, uh, Mrs. Barbara Von Villas and Mr. Richard Adams. <coughs> they would like to come before the committee uh, to speak about their unified high school proposal, which has been in the news recently. And I've communicated to both Mr. Adams and Mrs. Von Villas uh, that I would be in touch with them pending your decision. So they just want a date? They would like to come before, their request is to come before you. They said, <coughs> I believe in one of the emails I provided, it would be about 15 minutes. Um, I'd just like to give a little background on this. This summer, Mrs. Von Villas called me, and she said she'd like to meet to talk about this, so I said to please contact Mr. Rarick and get on the uh, agenda for the school committee so we could all talk about it. And, and then... Um, Ms. Black, could you just clarify exactly... Mrs. Von Villas is a... Um, is. She's a uh, town council member in Middletown, and their proposal is to look into having a unified school High school. High school in Middletown, located at the old drive-in theater. And um, so then the next step was that she came to the town council. Oh, they sent a, a referendum, a resolve to the Tiverton Town Council, and the town council asked them to send it over to us. And, and then they went before the town council, Tiverton Town Council, Mrs. Von Villas and Mr. Adams, to present their PowerPoint about the unified high school and um, then the town council voted again to please come before the school committee because they didn't feel like they wanted to give an answer till they had our input. So then when I sat next to her at that meeting, I said, please come before the school committee. That was the request for tonight. So I didn't know what date would be good. I wanted to bring it before everyone. 
I also saw the town council, uh, Middletown Town Council meeting where they presented it. Last night I saw them come before the <coughs> Little Compton Town Council to talk they're about it. The Portsmouth tonight they're before Portsmouth and tomorrow night Newport. So they just want a date? So they just want to, all we want like, tonight is a date, just want a date to come where they can come and I present it. said I would bring it to your attention. But it so, sounds like they need a, a little bit of time, leeway just to Yeah, I come. said that we would give them, uh, I think, an adequate lead time. To, so what are you thinking, Bill, in December? Uh, I would assume that our, I think we have one December 10th. 10th? Because we only have one meeting in December. Yeah. Yep. Probably be then. But I didn't want to commit without your We wanted to input. check with everyone right. to see when they should come. December 10th, okay. Is that good? So I'll, communi I'll communicate it. Carol? Yep. Okay. okay, we don't need it. So I'll just uh, let them know. Is it your understanding that we are the first school committee that they've spoken to? No. Um, yes. Portsmouth. No, they yeah. didn't go before. They so didn't go before we Portsmouth. Were the first school committee. Councils. Thank you. So, so they have been presenting to town councils. That's correct. Because legally, for a regional district, any kind of district, whether it's a high school like Foster Gloucester, as Ponagansett, mm -hmm. you need to get permission. You have to request permission from your governing bodies, which would be the town councils, to seek permission from to, go to, ride, right, to, to go to go ride. Right. To go to ride into the state so, legislature. But again. I, you know, most council, like our council, said, well, they want direction you really from the school should, committee. If the school committee, what their input is first. Right. That's why that was redirected back to us. And okay. So we'll listen to them. And again, Mrs. Lonville, listen our email, said it only be 15 minutes. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'll send an email to that will Mr. Be good. Adams tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Report and announcements. Uh, November 20th at 2 p.m., the bids close. Uh, for the facility study. We had eight <coughs> people come out uh, to tour on November 4th to tour the schools. Eight bidders? Well, eight perspective, per perspective. perspective bidders. bidders. Yeah, so pretty good. Uh, that was a pretty good turnout, I thought. So <coughs> we, uh, it's due uh, on the 20th. Do we need a meeting? I was going to recommend, um, if you want, we can meet, I think, because we wanted to kind of push this along. We could have a meeting on the 26th and just have it item specific. Yeah. Okay. You know, you'll have yeah, the, the RFPs before you. We'll just do that. Just do yeah. RFPs and. Okay. So that's uh, and we also have parent teacher conferences, um, Monday the Monday of Thanksgiving from five to eight, and then the Tuesday. And Tuesday. Right, and then Tuesday is the afternoon schedule from two thirty to five thirty. All right. So on the 26th, we'll the 26th just will The 26th will just be just the RFP. Mm -hmm. And then on December 8th, we'll be talking uh, again. I'm going to, while we're still doing the budget, I'll ask for your thoughts, you know, things that you might want to see in the budget or not want to see, or uh, so we oh, can address some of those. Yeah, so we can address some of that. Because believe it or not, since we don't have that second meeting, because we're on that tight timeline, right in our first meeting in January, we start off with the, the budget rollout. So <coughs> time flies, so we don't have a whole lot of time. And the principals have, just follow up, principals have given me their requests. And like last year, you'll get the, every, you know, things that they wanted but didn't make it to your first wave and so on and so forth. Any other announcements? Mr. Fassett? Uh, both the middle school and high school staff, uh, the high school just today, have received the uh, dating violence uh, formal training uh, by Mrs. Ann Burke. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get that, I'll bring it to the subcommittee and we can Anyone take else? care of another policy. Anyone else have uh, any yes, announcements, Doug? Uh, our school lunch contract is up at the end of the school year, so we're in the process of putting together the RFP for that with our other East Bay districts that, are, uh, that have been with us in, in the past few contracts. So we're, we're going to be compiling that information in the next few weeks, and then RIDE is heavily involved with this process. So you basically need to go through RIDE to get your RFP approved and so I'll be updating the committee over the, the winter as this process goes along. Actually, I do have one other item, and we may want to put it on our agenda on the 26th. 
I've talked to Al. It's good news. It's we could have final word from Ride on the Wi-Fi. Okay, so we have it. So Al's going to a meeting that very day to get finalists, and that's assuming they get it out before then. So if we don't, otherwise don't, it can wait. Till right. If you don't see it there, it won't be there. But I think, but we do want to approve as soon as possible because we want to make sure we're going to get in line. And Ride has indicated, and I was on the line today, that it's going to be upfront money and then they'll reimburse. So Ride's going to want districts to pay for, you know, stages of work and then they'll reimburse us. We're waiting for more information on that. Just, but, just formulating the process and then communicate that to the business managers. I wasn't I too happy to hear that. Is someone going to explain this to the business manager? And they said that they assured me they're going to yeah, There's a reason they haven't done that yet. <laughs> I asked the technical questions. If we're, if we're, if we're in good shape. So it's possible it could be a second item. That's okay. all. That's all. I yeah. For the school committee's benefit, I've also uh, distributed our October financials, and since we're relatively early in the, the fiscal year, I don't see any issues yet. We're still on budget. The only items that look a little unusual is up the cost of our wastewater treatment facility is in there toward the end of the report, uh, which is obviously a one-time item. But other than that, everything else looks to be moving along on budget. I do have something. Yes. Um, the road show, which is on WPRI uh, every year uh, with as part of their, well, the last few years, as part of their Thanksgiving coverage, they do pick a marching band to feature. Uh, this year, they will be featuring the Tiverton <coughs> marching band. They went down on uh, Saturday <coughs> morning, spent about an hour and a half taping. Um, very impressed with them. Um, very, Mike was very, very happy with them. So they, it will be airing November 27th as part of their uh, Thanksgiving show. It will start at 9, but they'll air it periodically throughout the day, too. So congratulations. Congratulations. So at 9 a.m. it'll start? Yeah. That's they, wonderful. It's on at 9 Isn't that 9 wonderful? I guess that this year they sort of did a Facebook, they did a social media request. Do you know a good, great marching band? Mm -hmm. And they were inundated on Facebook from Tiverton oh, it's fans. Tiverton. Oh, that's so wonderful. Good for our community. That's great. <laughs> and we also had the Hall of Fame dinner Thursday that oh, yes. went very well, oh, our yes. first yes. annual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The McGovern's and that went very well. Very and homecoming well. was Saturday. Another homecoming done. Mr. Cabral, could you talk about your feast you had over there for the, the turkey feast? We, we had a wonderful meal. We and did. Uh, we did. It's like a wedding feast. It's all with the silver and, and local homegrown. It was really nice. They just want us to renew the contract. And, and Ranger Bear wore his turkey Perhaps hat. He was like a big fan. Bring a feast to <laughs> the school committee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Diane, Sienna, could you please say about trip to URI? Uh, one of our Newport County mentoring meetings, um, the uh, consultant for science, Peter McLaren, was there, and he invited uh, representatives to attend a special presentation by Roger Bybee, who is one of the uh, lead authors of the Next Generation Science Standards. And so Mrs. Black went along with me, and it was very interesting. And his uh, theme, his topic was translating the Next Generation Science Standards into classroom instruction, and obviously we're in the same boat as with Common Core in that, you know, the publishers are, you know, trying to play catch up with all of this. Uh, luckily, we do have uh, a little more time, so we're not as rushed to get a new curriculum in place, but his advice was for teachers to just start looking through the standards, to look at what they have in place, and to start small with units that they can start to adapt and shift their instructors. So it was a wonderful speaker, though. Yeah, it was. Buy a couple of books for to bring into the district. Yeah. Yes, he did a good job. And Mrs. Lawson and I went to a public forum on uh, the kneecap. It was at the Providence Police Station. That was very exciting. And uh, it was a very well done forum. I think it was, right? Yeah, it was good. Bonus. Okay.
Thank you. I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session under PL or SS 4246 5A1 development of superintendent.